Hvem har vi nogen præster her? Mm. Præster. Mm. Præster. 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 So this one pastor um, wanted to post a Bible to his friend. Der var en præst, som ville sende en bibel til sin ven. So he made a very beautiful parcel. Så han lavede en smuk pakke. And went to the post office and gave it to the postal clerk. G- gik til postkontoret og gav det til uh, manden der. Now it's the duty of the postal clerk to ask. Uh, and he asked, is there anything breakable in this parcel, sir? Og det, som det er postmandens pligt, så skal han spørge, om der er noget, der kan gå i stykker i pakken. So the pastor answered that the only thing breakable in this parcel is the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> så svarede mænd, præsten, det er det eneste, der kan brydes her, det er de ti bud. <laughs> <laughs> Now, at every cause... <laughs> Now at every course we have one program and it is this that when a question is asked I speak on it for 45 minutes an hour hour and a quarter but in England America Spain everywhere else we do have one session where we have a rapid fire question and answer the reason for this is this that if then everyone can have a chance to ask something. Otherwise, if you have eight lectures and there are only eight people that can ask a question, and um, uh, perhaps that is not enough. So if we could have this session tonight, or this question and answer from the floor, it would be very nice. Although, if one question is asked, I try to cover it very comprehensively, so that unasked questions are also answered. Mm. Mm. Uh, vi har altid en ting på programmet, og det er en hurtig rækkefølge af spørgsmål og svar. Normalt taler jeg 45 til 45 til 60 minutter på en enkelt på et enkelt spørgsmål. Og det vil betyde, at hvis vi har otte møder, så vil kun otte mennesker få lejlighed til at stille spørgsmål. Så derfor vil vi have sådan en, som vi har haft alle andre steder, Amerika, Spanien eller i England og alle andre steder har vi sådan et punkt på programmet, hvor man stiller spørgsmål, og der bliver svaret kortere, og en hel masse mennesker vil få lejlighed til at stille spørgsmål. Og hvis der er nogle bestemt spørgsmål, jeg får lyst til at gå dybere ind i, så vil jeg gøre det stort set. Very good. I understood everything too. Good. Someone starter. Mm. Værsgo. Hvad er det, Would you guide the yeah. people with the hands up right? Do you believe there has been an atomic explosion? Uh, yes. Um, there has, uh, not to use the word atomic, but if you take the uh, continent of Atlantis, for example, which is quite prevalent in people's minds, Spørgsmålet var, tror du, der har været kerneksplosioner på andre planeter, ikke også? Og svaret starter med, øh, ja, øh, måske ikke bare kerneksplosioner, hvis du tager eksplosioner som for eksempel Atlantis' undergang. No, Atlantis was destroyed by, by an invention, and Atlantis was a very highly civilized culture. Atlantis blev ødelagt på grund af en bestemt opfindelse. Atlantis var en meget højt udviklet kultur. Now they had invented or discovered rather a kind of crystal. De havde opdaget en slags krystal. And it is because of man's folly. Og det er på grund af menneskets tåbelighed. With one faction trying to gain greater power over the other faction. Og en del prøver at få magt over andre that wars took place and this crystal was exploded. Og der opstod så krige og det krystal eksploderede. And it sank the it sank Atlantis. Og det sinkede Atlantis in certain stages. I visse stadier. Uh, India for example if you could get hold of ancient maps 
India was right at the bottom, right next to Africa. Hvis man kunne få fat på meget, meget, meget gamle kort, så ville man se, at Indien var, en, var meget tæt på uh, what af, Afrika. Indien og Afrika lå tæt op til hinanden. And because of this vast explosion, it created so many underwater earthquakes and uh, fantastic currents. På grund af den eksplosion så opstod der masse underjordiske jordskælv og meget kraftige strømninger. That this whole portion, which was next to South Africa, was shifted up. Og hele den store portion, som var ind, den lå tæt på Afrika, blev for skudt op. I could imagine the power of the explosion. Så en kraft, der må have været ved den eksplosion. Where a whole land mass, the size of India, was actually shifted. Og en landmasse på størrelse med Indien blev flyttet. And the very impact of that explosion, the, the very impact of India being shifted up to the north made the Himalayas rise. Oh, det at Indien forskød sig op der og stod sammen med noget skabte Himalaya bjergene. Yeah, it caused an earthquake, and as you know, all mountains are created by earthquakes. Det skabte et jordskælv, og som i vis så bliver alle opstår alle bjerge på grund af jordskælv. So this collision pushed up uh, the Himalayas. Så det sammenstød. Uh, uh, and it is believed that part of Atlantis is under the Himalayas. Oh, det fortæ- eller det, man tror, at en del af Atlantis er under Himalaya. Now, this I talk to you from experience, uh, and I've proven it to myself, that the greater fragmentation of that crystal is under the Himalayas. Uh, jeg taler nu af erfaring, og, og det, der er min erfaring, er, at største del af den krystal befinder sig nu under Himalaya. But there are smaller pieces scattered at nine points throughout this world. Og der er ni mindre dele, som er spredt rundt i verden. And those are very highly magnetic points. Og det er meget magnetiske steder. There is one piece of that crystal in Cape Town. Der er sådan en krystal i Cape Town. <coughs> yes. There's one portion of the crystal along the Yangtze River in China. Der er en ved Yangtze floden i Kina. There's one portion of the crystal along the Andes mountains. Der er en Andes bjergene. And like that, there are nine different places where pieces of those crystals are, and uh, there is a high magnetic vibration. Der er ni steder i verden, hvor der er brudstykker af de krystaller, og som steder, der er meget magnetiske. I personally invite you to come to Cape Town. Jeg vil gerne invitere jer til Kapstaden. And then feel the vibrations there. Og opleve vibrationerne der. Um, some countries are very rich in minerals. Nogle lande er meget rige på mineraler. Which also contains a vibratory factor to produce those minerals som også indeholder en vis vibrationskvalitet, der skaber disse mineraler. And countries like South Africa, Nigeria for example, and certain parts of Russia are very rich in minerals. Og lande som uh, South Af- Sydafrika og ja, uh, Nigeria og dele af Rusland er meget rige på de mineraler. For example, South Africa produces two thirds of the world's gold, three quarters of the world's diamonds. For eksempel forsyner uh, Sydafrika verden med to tredjedel af dets guld og tre fjerdedel af dets diamanter. It's got chromium, plutonium, uranium, der er pluton- manganese, everything. Der er plutonium og uranium og magnesium. And in spite of the opposition that there is from the world to South Africa, og på trods af den modstand, der er mod Sydafrika fra resten af verden, uh, nothing is happening because of vested interests. Der sker der ikke noget, fordi der er investeret store interesser i Sydafrika. Yeah. For example, South Af- uh, America would not have a single piece of chromium if it was not imported from South Africa. For example, vil USA, USA ikke have noget som helst kro, hvis ikke det blev importeret fra Sydafrika. So, to get the, to the point, not only planets 
but entire continents also have been dissolved or exploded. Så det er ikke kun planeter, men også kontinenter, som er eksploderet eller brudt i stykker. And every minute of the day, a certain universe is destroyed. Hver minut ødelægges der et eller andet univers. And so, and in every minute of the day, certain <coughs> universes are being created. Og hvert minut skabes der visse universer. So that, according to Hindu mythology, which describes it very descriptively. Og det er noget, som omtales meget beskrivende i hindu mytologi. They call it uh, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Og de kalder det Brahma, Vishnu og Shiva. Yeah. Creation, preservation and dissolution. Skabelsen, opretholdelsen og ødelæggelsen. So this law of nature exists all over the universe. Og den lov eksisterer overalt. And as I said, at this very moment, thousands of planets are being destroyed and others are being recreated. And this process is eternal. Og som jeg sagde, i dette øjeblik ødelægges tusinder af planeter og tusinder skabes. Now these planets seem to us to be so big, but in its proper context and in relationship to the universe, it is but nothing. Disse planeter synes så store for os, men i den rette sammenhæng, der er de ikke særlig store. And even in our present galaxy, this earth is not even as big as a grain of sand. Og bare i vores galakse er den her jord ikke større end et sandskorn. And yet on this grain of sand, there are 4,000 million people living. Og alligevel bor der 4,5 milliard mennesker på det sandskorn. And 99.9% of them think that they are the center of the universe. On year films come in any percent of them through the Verden Centrum. Good. Next. Next is possible. Same to under. There are X of course. Do you get Yes, it has to do with the crystal. The crystal has a great pulling force, and where the Bermuda, this is one theory advanced, that where the Bermuda Triangle is, there is a portion of this crystal that would uh, draw in the boats and the planes and disintegrate them totally. Har Bermuda-trikanten noget at gøre med disse krystaller? Ja, det er en teori, som er blevet fremsat. Der befinder sig nogle af de krystaller i Bermuda-trikanten. Det er noget, som, som tiltrækker ting, som får skib og fly til at gå ned og blive opløst og desintegreret. And because they could not discover the power of that crystal, that is why the Bermuda Triangle still remains a mystery. Og fordi de ikke har fundet disse krystaller, er Bermuda-trikanten stadigvæk et mysterium. Although so many different theories have, adva- have been advanced, that an airplane flying through the area enters a different dimension, that is not true. På trods af at teorien om, at alt er der en flyver, for eksempel, som flyver gennem området, kommer ind i en anden dimension, men det er ikke sandt. Because the plane itself is of such gross matter and the people in it, that for them to go to a different dimension would be impossible. Flyvemaskinen og de mennesker, som er i det, er så grov uh, karakter, at det vil være umuligt for dem at komme ind i en anden dimension. Because the evolutionary status is not applied to the gross matter, but it is applied to soul matter. Uh. Evolutionsgraden, altså udviklingsgraden, uh, angår ikke de grovere planer, men de finere planer. So what happens here is that it is totally disintegrated into minute atomic particles. Så det der sker er, at det bliver opløst til helt uh, de allermindste atompartikler. Good. Next. Næste. Henrik. Ja. Uh. Mm. 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 Ja. 
It's about uh, people who have who have had their bodies frozen down. Is the soul still attached to these frozen bodies? How do they experience life? Are they like in a bad dream or what? Mm-hmm. Mm. Would you like to have that experience? No. <laughs> It's too cold. <laughs> Now, um, there is a cult in America that after a person dies, someone opened up a business where they take the body and freeze it into a vault with the belief that uh, in time to come, uh, the soul will return to that body. Der er en sigt i Amerika, som har startet den forretning, at når folk de dør, så lader de deres lemer blive frosset ned. Og så uh, skulle det gå på, at en gang i fremtiden, så kunne man tøbe dem op, og så ville sjælen vende tilbage til kroppen. Hmm. This is not true. Det er ikke sandt. But it has become big business. Men det er en stor forretning. <laughs> Now, I remember while I was in America, not last year, but just about 18 months ago, they found a giant mammoth. Det var i Amerika for halvandet år siden, der hørte jeg om, at man... A mammoth, a prehistoric animal. Der hørte jeg om, at man fandt en forhistorisk mammut. And they found this mammoth frozen in ice in Iceland somewhere frozen in ice in Iceberg eller andet sted and this one restaurant was doing fantastic business <laughs> en forretning havde en fantastisk uh, indsigt på det yes by selling mammoth steaks <laughs> ved at sælge mammutbøffer <laughs> so what has happened there is this that the, the, the life force and the soul or the subtle body of the mammoth has left the body. Det der er sket er at livskraften eller sjælen har forladt lægen. But because of that deep freezing the, 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 the carcass, the body remained fresh. Men på grund af at det er frosset så dybt ned, så forbliver kroppen det fysiske Intact. Like I've been told by people that eat meat, that uh, many countries import uh, sheep and and oxen, cows, mm. cattle mm. You know, that have been killed or sent to the abattoirs six, eight months ago, and then quickly deep frozen. I heard on Minsk. I heard fra mennesker, der spiser kød, at nogle steder, der har man, uh, hvor man importerer lam eller kvæg og så videre, uh, abattoirs. Yeah, that's where they kill, slaughter, uh, uh, hvor man butchers. på slagterhus uh, uh, nedfryser uh, kroppen, dyrekroppen, det øjeblik, de bliver dræbt. And people in many countries are eating meat, which they think is fresh, but it's actually eight months a year old. Og mange mennesker, som tror, de spiser frisk kød, spiser i virkeligheden et halvt eller et helt år gammelt kød. See, that is technological development. Teknisk udvikling. <laughs> Where they preserve uh, dead flesh for a long period of time. Når man bevarer uh, dødt kød længe. But the soul is not there. Men sjælen er der ikke. Uh, next. Næste. Else. Eller, det er I'm thinking about Atlantis. This uh, uh, thing that when Atlantis went over. Could that have something to do with the doomsday and the big doomsday and the big flood? And can it have something to do with that the because of the shifting of continents, that the balance of the globe 
would shift. And that's why equator is now where the poles were before and Greenland has a cold that climate. That is true. Mm. That is true. Oh, yes. And not only that, many such explosions have occurred. Det er rigtigt, og der har været mange af den slags eksplosioner. But of course, um, the theory of Noah and his ark and taking pairs of animals, that is very symbolic. En uh, myten om Noah og hans ark, og som der to dyrene i par, det er meget symbolisk historie. It's mythology where truths are portrayed. And to me it means that in spite of all the calamities, the soul remains immortal and it again through the process of evolution takes on different forms. Det er en mytologisk historie, som for mig symboliserer det, at sjælen forbliver evig, opåvirket og gennemgår alle disse ødelæggelser. Eve, uh, what's the time? When is the next explosion due? <clears throat> when is the next explosion due? Uh, another 200,000 years time. 200,000 years you know. Yeah, I hope you're around. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're still there. Torben? Når sjælen forlader Lene, hvor længe bliver den så væk? Um, this is a very deep question, and um, I can speak about an hour on it. Mm. Would you like to have that for tomorrow morning? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Det er et meget dybt spørgsmål. Det kunne vi tage op i morgen. Ja. Yeah. Because then I could tell you what happens to the soul after it leaves the body. Uh, that's nice, because there was another question put forth about life after death, which could yeah. go very good together yeah. with this one. Right, and what happens to the soul, as you would call it, after death, and how you can die, you know, consciously. Hmm? Så kunne vi også komme ind på, hvor sjælen går hen efter det. Det vil være en nice subject for tomorrow. Det vil være godt emne til i morgen. To talk about dying. At tale om at dø. Ja, yeah. but uh, I'll need a few volunteers. Jeg behøver et par frivillige. You know, there was a story. <laughs> <laughs> I must have told it somewhere, but I could repeat it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there was a man who was very rich. He had palaces and he had everything the heart can desire. There was a man who was very rich and he had palaces and everything he could ask for. So after he had achieved all that, he had one desire, and that desire was to sit at the right hand of God. Og efter at have opnået alt det, så var der kun et ønske tilbage, nemlig det at sidde ved Guds højre hånd. So, he went to see a guru. Så han gik til en guru. And this guru was more a businessman than a guru. Og den guru var mere forretningsmand end guru. But in any case, the gurus existing in this world today, 99% of them are businessmen. Men de eksisterer også i dag. 99% af dem er forretningsmænd. Yes. That is why many of the organizations in the world are mass millions. Det er derfor mange organisationer i dag er masse. While well, true gurus are always existing from hand to mouth. Men virkelig guru altid lever fra hånden til munden. Mm. All right. So this guru said, you know, this is a problem how to get you to sit at the right hand of God. Guruen sagde så, ja, det er lidt et problem at få dig til at sidde ved Guds højre hånd. But I think I can do something about it. Come back in two weeks time. Men jeg måske kan jeg gøre noget ved det. Kom tilbage om et par uger. So this man was counting the days, you know, one day, five days, ten days, thirteen days, fourteen days, and he went to the guru. 
Efter fjorten dage gik han så tilbage til guden. So the guru tells him that look, I've made some contact, and there is a great possibility, but you know.